good evening to one and all present here it's my pleasure to extend a cheerful welcome to you all to this free online summer course on artificial intelligence welcome the challenges look for the opportunities in every situation to learn and grow in wisdom brain tracy i now extend a warm welcome to our resource person for this evening uh, ms Vaish vaishnavi on behalf of our respected college chair chairman sri d durai sami vice chairman sri d parandaman secretary sri d uh, dasaradan joint secretary sri s gopinath correspondent sri s amarnath direct director sri d sabarinath our beloved principal dr s ramachandran head of all ug and pg departments professors and faculty members and students of our institution thank you ms vaishnavi for joining with us today before we join before we begin this event let me share a brief introduction of our institution dharma naidu educational and charity charitable trust in uh, established as a engineering college in the year of 1998 to 1999 we are a nac a grade and ios 9001 2015 certified in institution located at thiruvair kadu all our departments are nba accredited we are working autonomous for 2019 for a span of 10 years we have 24 years of ex excellence with nine ug pro programs with including b ec triple e civil CSC, Mechanical and B.Tech IT, Artificial Intelligence and Data Science, Computer Science and Business System along with six PG programs which are MECC, SCAD and MECCAM, CSC, Communication System and Embedded System Technologies, MBA and MCA. We also support various doctorate programs in CSC, ECE, Triple E, Mathematics and Mechanical Engineering. SA Engineering College stands out in the, in the crowd of for its Anna University recognized a research center in 27 funded projects where students get chance to work on these projects. We provide highly compensive placement of about 90% each and every year. We have achieved 90% of placement even during this pandemic in the year of 2020 to 21. Our top requirements including hours of rapid data, MIPAS, Infosys, Capage Mini, CTS, TCS, Zoho, LNT. We have introduced latest courses on artificial intelligence and data science. CSE and business systems. We have state of art infrastructure, including Internet of Things Lab, Product Design and Development Lab to conduct research projects. SA Engineering College maintains high standard of education by providing a wide array of world-class academic facilities employing highly qualified and experienced faculty members and create an ambience of conductive quality education. Now, uh, now I request our resource person, Ms. Vaishnavi, to take over. Thank you. Let me just share my screen. Okay, so let's get started. If I have to name a technology that completely changes the 21st century, it would be artificial intelligence. As you know, artificial intelligence has become a part of our everyday life. So that is why it is very important for us to understand the different concepts of artificial intelligence. So with that in mind, let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Vaishnavi. So let us begin by discussing the agenda of today's session. Firstly, I would like to walk you through the history of artificial intelligence, followed by what is artificial intelligence, its evolution, and last but not the least, real life applications of artificial intelligence. So by the end of this two days session, I'd like you to I'd like to present you with the most valuable contents of artificial intelligence along with some roadmaps to pursue a career in the particular field that will be useful for you to make an informed decision regarding your career. So without further ado, let's get started. 
history of artificial intelligence. Here I have simplified and summarized the history of artificial intelligence for the better understanding. So the concept of artificial intelligence actually goes back to the classical ages. So under the Greek methodology, concept of machines and human were well thought of. Here is an instance of artificial intelligence during the Greek methodology. Talos. Talos was programmed to guard the island of Crete. It's actually an animated bronze warrior. So that was the beginning of artificial intelligence. Moving on to the 1950s, Alan Turing test. This particular test actually determines whether a computer can think like a machine or not. The Turing test was actually a serious proposal of artificial intelligence physio uh, uh, philosophy. So moving on to 1951, it is game AI. This era was marked off game artificial intelligence. During this period, a lot of scientists were actually developing programs for checkers and chess. However, these programs are now being rewritten and redone to a better program and done in a better way. Further, and during 1956, the, it is marked as the era for artificial intelligence as this year was when John McCarthy coined the term artificial intelligence. So along all these way, there was not a term that actually, I mean, the term artificial intelligence did not exist at all until 1956. So John McCarthy, who is also known as the father of artificial intelligence, was the one who coined the name artificial intelligence. Moving on, the first laboratory for artificial intelligence was set up in the year of 1959. MIT AI laboratory was the first lab that was solely dedicated to the research purpose of artificial intelligence. Moving on, 1960s, general motor robots. The, it, the general motor assembly line introduced the first ever robot. Moving on, first chatbot was introduced during 1961, Eliza, uh, artificial, it was introduced to the world of artificial intelligence. And moving on, 1997, IBM's Deep Blue beat the world champion Caddy Craspro in a chess game. Further in the further in this session, we'll be discussing about the particular uh, IBM's product, where I'll brief you regarding what is the product, what category of AI it belongs to. Yes. Actually, artificial intelligence has a has multiple classifications and types, and it is a deep sea where we have to dive deep to understand each and every bit of artificial intelligence. But not to worry, today I'll be briefing uh, briefing you about the concepts in short forms. Yeah. So moving on, 2005. In now. 2005 counts as an interesting year because an autonomous robotic car won the DARPRA uh, Grand Challenge. It was actually built by Stanford Racing Team. So that was the first car that actually won a challenge. So that's why it is an interesting era. And that is where AI took a turn. That is where AI became a little more popular to, to the world, to the real world. So moving on 2011. So in 2011, once again, IBM system, a question answering system, Watson, defeated the two champions, Brad Ritter and Ken Jennings. So that was the brief history of artificial intelligence. We can see that since 1950s up till now, we can observe an exponential growth of artificial intelligence. But comparing to the 2011 and 2022, that's the year we are in right now, it is far more potentially growing and growing a little more faster. So let's go for the next topic.
what is AI? So by seeing the picture itself, we can understand what AI itself is. So AI is actually a concept of feeding human-like thinking and practice into machines in order to make them work automatically. In other words, feeding sense into machines. So why do we use the term artificial intelligence? Right? That question rises whenever we repeat artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence. So what is it? Why do we use the term? So these machines are artificially incorporated with human-like intelligence to perform tasks like a human does. So they are built with complex algorithms, mathematical functions to act like a human. The way we think, the way we act, the way we approach, the way we reciprocate, the way we react, everything will be incorporated by a machine, but artificially. So how are we going to incorporate it? How are we going to do it? Let's see in the further slides. The science and engineering of making intelligent machines, especially intelligent programs. John McCarthy, the father of artificial intelligence says. So let us look into the compositions of artificial intelligence. So this is where we'll, I'll be enlightening you about the different uh, different uh, compositions and the, that is what does an AI do at its core. So let's get started. Here is a lab. Okay. So this particular robot was built inside a lab and further it was dropped in a field. In spite of the variation of lighting, color, landscapes, that is, it's like a newborn baby. So it will be newly put into an environment where it was not before been there at all. So the particular AI robot must perform as expected. So the ability to perform, the ability of performing, adapting to a new situation is known as generalized learning. This is one core point that a artificial intelligent machine must contain. That is generalized learning, observing its environment, understanding its environment and reacting and generally learning it accordingly. Moving on, the robot is now at a crossroad and one is a paved path and the other one is a rocky path. So the robot must actually determine which path to take based on these circumstances. So this portrays the ability of reasoning. So the second point is reasoning ability. So an artificial intelligent machine must have generalized learning ability and reasoning ability. Further, after a short storm, the robot now encounters a stream that it cannot swim across because come on machines cannot swim because they are made up of electronic and electrical devices so it cannot uh, get in contact with water or any form of liquid right it can short circuit so now what it does is by using the plank provided as an input to the robot it is able to cross the stream so our robot uses the given input and gives a solution for the problem. So this is called as problem solving ability. So majorly there are three qualities or three abilities that an artificially intelligent machine or a robot or a chatbot must contain. Those are firstly generalized learning, reasoning and problem solving. So, so that is how a how a robot is artificially enabled with human-like intelligence. In short, artificial intelligence provides human or robots the ability to adapt, reason, and provide solutions. So now that we know what artificial intelligence is and what kind of qualities must it contain, like uh, say, a uh, human ca has character, so does a machine should if it is artificially enabled. That is, artificially, artificial intelligence is enabled in it. So now, we'll, 
let's discuss the types of uh, AI that has been broadly categorized into. The first one we are going to discuss about is weak AI. It is the first classification of artificial intelligence. It is also known as narrow AI. So now why is it called weak AI? Well, these type, actually these type of artificial intelligence generally focus on a single task alone. That is, it cannot do more than a, more than one task at a time or more than one task that would, that it has been programmed to do. For example, let us look into AlphaGo. AlphaGo is an artificial intelligent agent that is trained to compete against humans in the game of Go. It's actually a Chinese strategic board game, very similar to chess game, but not exactly chess game. So this AlphaGo is a project of uh, Google's DeepMind division. Uh, its measure of AI advancement is the capacity to design a learning system that can actually beat a human player in a strategic game. But uh, you cannot expect this, uh, expect it to be remotely, even remotely good to good at chess. So now we understand that a particular AI robot, which is designed for that one particular aspect alone can be called as weak AI or narrow AI. So you might think now Alexa should be should not be a weak AI. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint, but even Alexa is a weak AI. It cannot perform multiple tasks. Well, uh, that is because when you ask Alexa to play a song Despacito, like say, play Despacito, it picks up the keyword that is play and Despacito. It only picks up these two words and tries to match it with the index of Google or whatsoever search, any search engine that it has been programmed to redirect to. And it fetches the results for you. But it cannot, it can never answer you uh, as a human. That is, answer a live question. So you can actually try asking Alexa, what is the status of traffic from home to work to home? I bet you that it will not be able to answer it because it's a weak AI. It has not been manually trained to or programmed to answer live questions. That is, to answer a live question, uh, AI must be trained or programmed to learn from its living. That's learn from its experience. But weak AIs don't do that. So that brings us to the next classification that is strong AI or general artificial general intelligence. So this concept is actually mostly, I mean, this concept that mostly exists in novels, fictions, or even movies to say. Uh, these type of uh, AI uh, exist only in, uh, you know, fictional movies like Marvel movies. So Ultron is Ultron from Avenger is actually an ideal example of strong AI. That's because it is self-aware. Eventually, it even develops emotions. So that is why it can be called as Ultron. You know, I mean, uh, sorry, strong AI. So actually, the these kind of AI's response is mostly unpredictable, and this is also a hypothetical thing which has not been implemented in the real life yet. So furthermore, last but not the least, to sum up this whole classification, uh, we are going to talk about super AI. That is, this type actually is, a, is actually a hypothetical theory. It has not been implemented in Earth because it will be a big threat to human lives. Since uh, these kind of machines actually surpass intelligence of a human, it can actually observe senses, become independent, highly unpredictable. So it is very dangerous for the environment of humans, I mean, living beings. Because, see, uh, see uh, we all contain good and bad. So what if that good and bad senses are fed inside a machine? So what would be its outcome? Just think about it. Just imagining it is actually more dangerous. I mean, feels more feels a little bit, you know, dangerous or vulnerable you know, will become vulnerable to the machine. So that's one reason why it stays hypothetical to the nature. So next, now you must be wondering, 
uh, what are the connections of artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning? Because uh, as soon as we ta start talking about artificial intelligence, everyone start getting this thought that, so what is artificial intelligence? What is machine learning? Like, are they the same thing? Uh, these are the same things? Uh, like, are they just the terms, different terms about a single concept or something? Well, let me actually brief you about it as well. So um, machine learning is actually a technique to achieve artificial intelligence, whereas deep learning is uh, in turn a subset of machine learning. So these are like uh, subsets inside a set inside a set, set inside a set. So art, a deep learning is inside machine learning and machine learning depends on artificial intelligence. So it's kind of all together, but with different concepts uh co incorporating different concepts and different method methodologies so let us now look deeper into the concept of uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning machine learning actually provides the capability for uh, machines to learn from data and experience through algorithms like uh, say a, nowadays uh, companies such as facebook google uber make machine learning a centralized part of their operation like it has become a very significant competitive differentiator for many companies nowadays. So let us uh, focus more on the types of uh, machine learning. See, machine learning is basically split into three types. One is supervised learning. The other one is uh, unsupervised learning. And the third one is reinforcement learning. So talking about supervised learning, so these machines are task driven that is they are basically trained by humans the the these particular machines or robots are fed with both input and outputs and are programmed in a way that how it has to react to similar inputs and similar outputs so this is where a human will actually sit down with the computer or a machine and train it to act according like a, I mean by a, like a human so unsupervised learning is actually more like uh, it uh, that particular machine tries to identify patterns of, of uh, you know actions and trying to learn from it now coming to the reinforcement learning it is actually programmed to learn by observing the environment and uh, methods so that is the three types of machine learning, which I wanted to give you a brief about since uh, it is also a part of artificial intelligence. So going on, let's talk about deep learning. Deep learning uh, does this learning base inspired by humans. It is basically a neural network. Like we all have the, the we all know what is neurology, what is uh, I mean, how, like we can relate neurology and this neural system. Every brain works in, in a neural systematic way. So in deep learning, uh, this deep learning concept is entirely based on a human's brain, the way human brain functions. It's neural, uh, neural system, the how it, it works, the neural networks of the human brain. So practical example of uh, deep learning are virtual assistants, vision for car driverless cars and uh, face recognition and etc. So de deep learning requires actually a large amount of data. See, for example, driverless cars developed, uh, I mean, development requires millions of images, thousands of hours, uh, hours of videos because see, we are going to feed information into those uh, machines to understand how what to do like what kind of uh, operations or action that must be performed if it uh, encounters uh, encounters a hindrance or an accident or a human in front of it so these are the things that it focuses on so deep learning also requires some substantial i mean uh, uh, computing power for efficient deep learning process so when compare when it is actually compare uh, combined with clusters or uh, cloud computing this enables development teams to reduce training time for uh, deep learning network from weeks to hours or less so
so basically these uh, cl uh, cloud compute i mean when it's uh, combined it will be much easier for the development of the particular machine so moving on ray cruzwell actually he's a well known futurist he predicted that by the year of 2045 we would have robots as smart as humans that is uh, this is called as point of singularity the human and a robot can sit there, uh, uh, like opposite to each other and compete equally with each other. So this was his prediction or his saying. Uh, further moving on, in fact, Elon Musk predicted that the human brain and the body will be enhanced by artificial intelligence, which would actually make us partly cyborg. So that was his uh, prediction as well. So moving on, let us discuss about the types. The types works, uh, uh, type states the current, only considers the current situations. So let us uh, discuss about the first type. Sorry. Yeah. Reactive machines. So this type actually works based on current data and takes only current situation into consideration. Uh, they can only perform narrow range of predefined tasks. They cannot be predictive at all. That is like uh, we have to give a set of data inside it, like pre-existing data or input data or uh, some program data inside it to fed, uh, feed inside it so that it will know what to do next. Like if uh, uh, in, the, in this example, we can see, the, uh, see that uh, blue deep, uh, I mean, sorry, deep blue, uh, IBM technology that we previously talked about during the history of AI actually defeated the world champion Gary Cap Ka okay, Kaspro in, in, in chess during 1997. So this was possible only because each and every move and each and every defending moves were pre-taught to the machine. So it was able to just uh, move according to the programs that it was uh, fed with. So the these kind of missions are not easy to develop as it might seem like. Even weak AI, this actually belongs to weak AI category. So even those are not very easy for uh, anyone to actually, you know, build it or uh, produce it because you, you'd be needing a lot of algorithms. You have to work on a lot of mathematics and etc. One concept actually I wanted to explain or brief you about is uh, if you're strong in uh, mathematics or say a little bit logic, uh, you are more onto the logical side of uh, living, then uh, trust me, AI is the, the most, be, uh, most, you know, aligning career for you guys, because uh, basically the AI depends on logical thinking and you have to have a great understanding of how human brain works or how uh, human acts, understands, reacts, and everything. So if you're more onto the logical side of, uh, you know, living your life, I guess uh, AI is just for you. So moving on, let's discuss about limited memory AI. So limited memory AI can um, make informed and improved decisions by studying the past data from its memory. Such uh, AIs has uh, actually short-lived or say temporary memory that is used to store past experiences, hence can evaluate future actions. For example, here we have given self-driving cars. They basically have temporary memories. They use past experiences or uh, uh, that is uh, uh, this is very much uh, related to machine learning where we were talking about a person will sit there like supervised learning, they'll they'll sit there, they'll uh, feed each and every input to the machine, and the machine will start observing those things and learn accordingly, and it will react when uh, when a similar situation occurs. So it uses sense to in, actually these kind of I mean self driving cars uses sensors to identify humans or any steep road etc., which is also useful to actually prevent future accidents. So moving on, let us focus, let us talk about theory of mind. Okay, this theory of mind is very much related to hu human emotions. Okay, 
So it is one of the most advanced type of artificial intelligence. This category is spec uh, speculated to play a crucial role in human psychology. It majorly focuses on a human's thought process, their belief, like uh, how they act, how they understand, how they react emotionally, what are their beliefs. So these machines are not actually fully developed or anything. They are still under regressive research, you know, happening in that particular area. If this, these, this type of machine is actually successfully produced, trust me, half of the work of a psychologist might uh, reduce because every day a psychologist deals with millions of patients. I mean, a lot of patients, uh, not millions, of course. So a lot of patients where they'll need to handle their emotions as well because dealing with a patient is not that simple as it might seem like or sound like, uh, especially for a psychiatric department. So building such uh, AIs can be, I mean, be a turning point. If uh, any one of you or any of you are interested in so much in pursuing a career in AI, you might actually start focusing on this particular field because it's one of the most focused or let's say, uh, no, this particular field has a lot of future scope. This will never die because it's still being under research. And uh, if you're able to, you know, successfully uh, de uh, develop this particular machine, you can even uh, win a Guinness record because nobody knows that um, who is capable of what. Every human is uh, unique. Every human is uh, capable of everything. So no one can judge anybody. Everyone is uh, knowledge. Everyone is unique. Everyone is beautiful. So with that, uh, let's move on to the last type of uh, AI that is self-aware AI. So guys, actually, let's fold our hands and pray that we don't reach this type of AI. Since these machines actually include own consciousness and become self-aware. The Elon Musk, again, yeah, he remember previously, he also told us that uh, partly humans and machines will be integrated, like being a cyborg and stuff. So that thing can even go beyond. And uh, he, these type of AI machines uh, actually can surpass human. This type actually belongs to strong AI classification. Like uh, genius is like... Uh, Okay, hold on. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. Geniuses like Elon Musk, Stephen Hawking and uh, have like constantly wonders about the evolution of artificial intelligence because art, as, uh, as much as artificial intelligence is like uh, a far advanced technology, uh, it also has its own pros and cons. Uh, artificial intelligence can be of benefit today, but it can be of danger tomorrow. So it is always to be, is I mean, it is always uh, advised that one should be aware of what he is building because it can be either it can be a threat or it can be very beneficial for the environment or the world. So let us now talk about uh, how AI impacts our daily life. So. Smartphones, as we know, smartphones are one of the most, you know, uh, AI incorporated uh, devices and which everybody, every household has. So your uh, Apple Siri or say our uh, Google's assistant, okay, Google, all, the, all those are actually weak AIs. Okay, let's not uh, say weak AIs, they are AIs, okay? Because uh, the AI, weak AI has not yet evolved, evolved to general AI, that is like strong AI yet. They are still under development. Uh, most of it are only fictional, like I said before. So smartphones. Another one is surveillance and security. See, uh, na, the concept of, uh, you know, capturing the particular uh, number plate and... Uh, uh, like identifying the numbers and uh, delivering it to the particular concerned person so that it will be caught when you are uh, over speeding or anything is one type of artificial intelligence that is being used. And then social media platforms. Okay, this might you all, I mean, this you all might have known. Uh, basically, when uh, say, suppose if now I'm talking about artificial intelligence and there are n number of devices around me, like my mobile phone, my tab, my. Ma 
my mother's phone. So in all these uh, mobile phones, for the next few weeks, I'll be only receiving, you know, things related to artificial intelligence courses or say mobile phones. It basically every, uh, you know, device and every, uh, you know, machine captures what we say and it reacts accordingly. Unknowingly, all our devices are very active that, I mean, all our devices are connected to the internet. So those are those all are very active and the algorithm is set up as such that it captures the voice even. Even Apple does that. It's not just Android mobile phone or Windows phones or Windows uh, operating system or anything. Even uh, Apple phones, iOS products even do that. So that is how uh, it happens. And also when you search for a particular keyword in a search engine, that's one of the AI, that's one of uh, AI's work as well. It uses certain particular algorithms to capture the data or I mean, data in the sense uh, your keywords and it throws to the business unit where those words will be processed and relatable contents and relatable ads and relatable stuffs will be shown on your social media platforms. Uh, another good example is uh, navigation. So talking about navigation, it has uh, become a very, you know, uh, very much attached. Like it's more like a family now. It's uh, before people used to comment about uh, Google's uh, ma Google Maps, like when you enter a particular destination, it gets you to a rotten place or uh, somewhere inside a forest instead of, uh, say, you entered a place, uh, po you entered police station, but it, uh, I mean, you end up at a desert or something. That time, the navigation, like Google Maps, were not well developed. But now, incorporating AI and different types of algorithms, uh, navigations have... Uh, has become very powerful. It even, uh, it even, okay, there is one thing that uh, you all might have noticed. You might have visited a nearby mall or say a place. And as soon as you get out of the place, you'll have this uh, notification seen in your mobile phone showing that uh, uh, how was uh, this particular place? Say I visited a supermarket and gray supermarket and it will show me a notification. Uh, saying how was gray supermarket rated review the uh, can you please give a review so how does it happen in spite of you switching off your uh, gps your data are still collected and being transmitted without your knowledge the particular terms and conditions which we all ignore while installing or you know uh, processing certain uh, forms or anything those terms and conditions include these stuffs, but we all tend to ignore it. So in that particular terms and conditions, uh, there'll be these kind of uh, terms I mean, these kind of conditions that uh, they'll use your GPS uh, in spite of you turning it off and all that. Not in the literal sense, but it usually happens. So talking about e-commerce. So for one of the biggest uh, user of artificial intelligence today is e-commerce. I don't know how many of them are aware of it, but e-commerce, that uh, especially due to pandemic situations, has become such a big boom. So in order to make it more efficient and uh, make it more attractive for the humans, you know, they have incorporated, um, I mean, a number of algorithms for the business, um, for the efficient working mechanism of e-commerce like uh, as i said before for the social media platforms well uh, you know uh, example the same thing applies to e-commerce here uh, whatever you search whatever you uh, you know give out in uh, in voice or by word into a machine those all things are captured those all things are captured and sent to a business unit those keywords and things are processed and similar kind of ads are shown here. Search engine is again one of the best example. It even applies over here. Like uh, it captures the words and uh, say you're just, uh, you wanted to search about uh, say, let us say pen. Just, you'll be, you'll, be just, uh, you'll be talking about a pen to your mother or you wanted to buy a pen, you'll be going to a shop, your mobile phone will be in, in your hand. And you are saying to the, uh, you know, 
retailer or uh, let's say the shopkeeper that I need this pen. You just have to name the brand and that particular brand will actually haunt you through next three weeks. It will not go at all. There will be all the three weeks which will be haunting you with that particular product alone. Because I have experienced this n number of times and I have even tried to, you know, chase the keyword by saying some other things as well. But still, in spite of doing all that, I see this, uh, you know, I see that particular product every now and then, like in all the sites, in all the places. Uh, one of the most, uh, you know, uh, amazing thing is that, uh, say I'm just carrying my mobile phone with me and not any other devices, but since my email ID is synced with my mobile phone, I mean my tablet and as well as my Windows computer. So these ads will not only be popping up in, in my mobile phone, but also in my tablet also in my windows not by not due to search engine search engine keywords and all because i spoke about that particular product to someone while i was carrying my mobile phone and now this uh, mobile you know this machine system has actually captured those keywords and stuff and actually you know used it to advertise and market its product you know various products in the market in the environment so that's how e-commerce uh, works Banking and financial sectors, automated vehicles, yeah, automated art, uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, remember the time I told about uh, uh, DRAP, uh, DRAPA, okay, DRAPA Grand Challenge, yeah. So the DRAPA Grand Challenge was won by a uh, Stanford, uh, you know, uh, the team de uh, team developed uh, autonomous uh, robot car, which actually won the challenge. So those kind of uh, places where they use these kind of uh, vehicles where it will run on its own, like uh, self-driving cars. Uh, you know, Tesla recently launched, okay, I cannot say recently because it was some, somewhat like eight or nine months ago. Uh, Tesla launched its uh, automotive, you know, auto driving uh, car. And uh, while driving it, uh, there was also, a, you know, escort to the car. He was sitting inside it, he uh, put it on uh, auto drive. And uh, the car was driving, but it failed to recognize the median. The one particular, you know, uh, the particular, uh, uh, how to say this? I don't know how to explain a median in a road. I guess you guys get it. So I'll just imagine or uh, assume that you get it. So it was not recognizing the medium and, uh, and it was going to hit the medium. Median. So this happened because that particular Tesla auto drive mode program was needed to be developed further, even better, in even better manner. So that was the reason why it failed. And they are still developing it. And no, uh, as far as uh, I mean, my opinion or uh, my thought processes, I would say that automobiles, like I mean, uh, self-driving cars. Um, can be a success and cannot be a success cannot because we can never actually completely depend on machines alone but with artificial intelligence it is possible sooner or less i guess tesla will be launching its uh, you know self-driving car successfully so with that uh, i want to talk about smart smart house you might have seen in various uh, hollywood movies about a smart house where they'll just use some uh, you know mobile phones to operate the house even in India, they use that. I'm not sure where and, and all. So there is this particular Hollywood movie, which I saw like two, three years back. Uh, the entire house was under the AI's control. Okay. So whatever the command the particular person gives, he was all alone at the house. So whatever particular command he gives, the house acts accordingly. Uh, when he, and uh, okay, the be one of the best examples, which everyone might know is... Uh, the the one in uh, Friends series. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember his name. He was Monica's uh, one of the Monica. I mean, one of Monica's boyfriends. Okay, let's say X. Uh, he was a billionaire. He found Moses three uh, sixty five something, and uh, his house was completely you know handled by AI machine. He used to give voice commands like Jarvis and all that. So with that. Uh, I have explained everything like real life uh, applications of uh, AI. So further, let's, uh, I mean, last slide, let's go to the last slide because we are running out of time. 
yeah so since human brain is still a mystery it's no surprise actually ai has uh, also has a lot of unmentioned domains so for now ai is designed in such a way that it only it can work with humans and make our task easier like daily tasks easier daily routine easier however with the maturation of technology we can only wait and watch what the future of ai holds for us so with that uh, i'd like to end the session if there is any queries please pop before that i'd like to say tomorrow we'll be seeing about uh, the road map like how can we pursue a career in ai and uh, what are the steps or what are the things that needs to be taken into account to for you to develop yourself for the basic understanding of ai and uh, what and all steps you need to take how can you do it where to find the resource and all that so that's it that's it and any queries guys you can drop it on the chat box and someone will let me know So meanwhile, I'll also let you know about like uh, Python is one of the you know most used uh, programming language out there for uh, artificial intelligence. So if you ever want to, if you want to uh, pursue a career in AI, or say uh, if you want to you know have a good develop, I mean programming knowledge. I mean if you want to develop yourself uh, for the developmental or software engineering side and all. you can start with c but uh, if you are more into ai you can start with python because uh, since python has a lot of libraries libraries are like uh, predefined functions and stuff you don't have to bother about writing it like writing a program and getting a output you can just give a uh, give a word and a function i mean a function word and uh, that will automatically fetch you the desired output so python is uh, used vastly to actually ad- achieve artificial intelligence uh, easily because since it has artificial intelligence uh, has a lot of uh, algorithms and um, you know mathematical functions to focus on so it's much better to use a easier or let's say featured very i mean very much featured uh, t- programming language than just a normal one like c or java c and java are good but the reason why python is good because it is it 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 makes you work more efficient and easier you don't have to spend a lot of time building up a system you can spend a less time and build up your own system you can as well go to youtube and search for a lot of uh, contents regarding ai and you can even uh, focus on uh, you know um machine learning uh, algorithms instead of ma- machine learning algorithms i would say focus on uh, real time you know projects of machine learning you can there are uh, basically these machine learnings uh, use data set to analyze the you know uh, analyze certain actions of real world and according to those data they'll react I mean the machines will react so that's one thing that you can focus on so machine learning and data analytics are kind of similar but they are different in their core so you can go to youtube and uh, surf around machine learning projects and you can get a lot of free projects which are, and the even to develop those project it will only take about a hour or so there are even 20 minutes project out there you can uh, develop it using uh, python so that is why actually python is widely used among artificial intelligence development that is why i am re- recommending python to you guys so if you ever want to get started i mean kick start your career for with artificial intelligence go for python it's for you out there it's the it's the language you have to chase after so with that 
I'm finishing it off. So if there is any queries, please drop it in the comment box. And this particular statement here, important thing is not to stop questioning by Albert Einstein. Say it's Albert Einstein. Uh, this is my go-to, you know, proverb or go-to saying that I keep in mind uh, because that's one thing that keeps me going. That one thing that makes me curious about everything out there. I want to learn everything. I want to know everything. So to know everything, you have to question everything. What, what the four or five W's? What, why, where, how? Those are the things that you have to always keep in mind if you're going to learn about a new thing. So that is it. Thank you for your time, guys. Quote of thanks. Um, I would maintain that uh, thanks are the highest form of thought and the gratitude is happiness, double by wonder. It is said by Gilbert K. Chesterton. Thank you, ma'am, for your outstanding discussion. We have now reached the end of this session and this is the time to extend our gratitude for the successful completions of today's event artificial intelligence. Gratitude is like a magnet. The more grateful you are, the more you will receive. I deem it my privilege in proposing the oath of thanks. At the outset, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the management for providing an opportunity and extending a full support to organize such an event. I would like to thank our principal, Sir Dr. S. Ramachandran, for being a source of motivation and guiding us to conduct such events. I would like to thank our most eminent speaker, Ms. Vaishnavi, for spending her time with us and enlightening the, the stay with her knowledge. Profound thanks to the event organizing committee for playing a pivotal role in organizing and ensuring the smooth conduction of this event. I also thank all participants for accepting our invitation and an extending full support. Dear participant, uh, the feedback form will be posted in the chat box and kindly do fill it and get your participant certificate. Once again, I thank you all.